SPL. I mean, you know, SPL kind of bands. Like, Thor is fine. Merlin, debatable. Probably not. Let's leave Set and Arthur open. So you get one, they get one. On paper. Oh, I'm bad. Fine. So we take a set. Fine, first pick. And you know, they're probably taking Arthur no matter what, because there's not many characters that can kind of match set. And once Arthur gets boots, he can beat set. So if I'm them right now, I'm probably getting Arthur. I'm going to get a jungler. I don't remember how they drafted or anything. I'm saying what I would do. So they're going to get the Anher. Anher's a flex pick, but with the meta and competitive, he's probably going mid. Same thing, probably going mid. Come by, contested pick. Finally pick up here. They can get first pick of their Guardians right here. Or they can get a valuable, another valuable flex. Like, again, like... Yeah, well, I think they picked a guardian. From them, I'm looking at ban out mages here that play hunter roles. From you guys, I'm looking to do the same thing. I'm looking to ban out junglers that give Humbots a hard time, give the team a hard time. Kind of like uh, Robin, Sir Cat. They ban Thoth. Kronos is still open, too. I mean. Fine, Ben, look at that. I thought that was Tony's son or a kid or something. Mm. It might have been Axel. No, Axel's like 10 or 11. He can read. It was the Kronos ban. So, they get to pick. If I'm them, I'm probably taking, like, honestly, I would be taking, like, Soul or something here, or, like, or something along those lines, or a jungler. And they get the Morgan, which I don't really like into this comp. I guess you get double Ares, double Humbots, which could be strong, but this guy just uses on her every transformation, so. I like this draft a lot. This, I think, is a good draft from you guys. I would have taken the Arthur over the set. It's easier to execute. Okay. But there's no big drafting problems right here. I mean, I think on paper, your guys' draft is just as good, if not better. Let's go into the game. Uh, is one of us recording this for Drago and Epic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For you guys are you recording? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm already recording. Yeah. Oh. So. Let's take like a starting build and see where everyone starts on the map. So. Starting builds. We have the classic. You have first. Let's match everything up. Uh, this is gonna be messed up. It's always like messed up. I don't even care. I never like do this correctly. Third jungler and uh, Aries. Just swap. Oh my god, no, that's not correct. You have it. There you go. There you go. As far as starting builds go. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Morgan's rushing boost. That's a little suspect. Not getting like that T1 lifesteal or a T1 book of Thoth. Kyle, you definitely have a big power spike over her in duo. Minions have spawned. 
Uh, early, Arthur's but... rushing T1 Glide Shield. He, has, he doesn't have that many pots, so if Epic can force him out early, he doesn't really have much. <laughs> this is all good. Exactly what you need to be doing when you have a lot more sustain than they do. This is standard. They also start standard. Let's see if there's any differences along the route. Nope. Turtle, we've been talking about you have to go to red. You can't you have to stop coming to mid. Oh. Look at how much quicker Honor's gonna get to red. And he's probably gonna wind up picking up mids for it too. Yeah. Yeah, red's done already, it looks like. He's gonna just pick it up. Now, Ares should have held that. What? Like, Ares clears pretty well. Ares clears him. better, but Ares still should have held that last hit there. There's like, what, what, like, where's the fight here? There level two be. Ares, level two a Wheelix. Griffin has the abilities used right now on cooldown. We can actually look at that. You know, he has to, he has monkey bounce. I forgot that we paused, so it just likes to cool down and just go, but... It's safe to say that he has, like, both abilities are probably used here. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get into the fight. Koomba has nowhere to go. Shell's most definitely getting forced here. I'm more sleepy than I thought. So overall, we lose the Kumba passive. It's not that bad. What the hell is this shortcut for? Uh, there it is. What I thought it was. So during this whole like skirmish here, Griffin's not here. So. You guys need to stop taking these fights. Like, you have to let them clear and then push up. And you kind of just deal with it later. What happened to everyone on the minimap? They're just That's gone. That's what I'm confused on, too. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I just break? I'm from my bed. I don't know. I guess we just push everything until it works. I don't know, I guess it was M. M apparently does that. M apparently hides ADCs. <laughs> now I have no health bars again. Well, you lowers the map, that's good to have on anyway. Alright, so we have health bars back. Right, well, we're not unassisted anymore. I think plus uh, R, you'll be fine. Or F. Well. <laughs> oh, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so right here, you're the same thing, forcing the same fight. Are we think unlocked camera. I think we are. <laughs> Titch goes against the wall, it gets picked off. I mean, a lot of this is kind of just comes down to, like, Griffin's not, look where Griffin was though, again, you guys are not here for the 3v3 fights, like, ever. There's never a sense of you guys are together, you know, looking to do the same thing. Again, you have aggression coming in mid, both of you guys are farming up, Titch isn't here, the wave has to be held for him. Trisha's level, Trisha's hit level 4, on her has been 4, so... Make camps are coming up on both sides. Not today. 
They know your backflip is down. So mid camps are coming up. Tish is not there to to con Tish can't contest them alone. So I they're obviously probably gonna go to that after the wave, and we're gonna lose another set of mid camps. <laughs> And there they go. You guys have got to start warding the mid camps or putting the timers down or kind of understanding, you know, where and when you need to be there. Griffin's on blue. So, talk me through. I was going through your guys' heads. What was the plan here? Um, at this moment on, I think there wasn't any. Uh, there wasn't. I'm pretty sure I got Morgan ult. I think I asked Griffin to come over. Because she didn't have ult and she wouldn't be able to get away from him. Yeah, that's Morgan ult is down here, you know, but so you have Morgan ult down. You guys now have time around left mids. You just got them. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Griffin should have used his three there, not his two. So you guys lose now you have mid camp timers on both sides. So there's no reason why you guys shouldn't be contesting or looking for a fight at those camps if that's what you want to do. You guys are definitely losing the sentry control battle in mid. Over here, you definitely kind of see Asian is... Asian's still at the part of the matchup where he can do fine. As soon as you see Arthur start to back and get those shoes, as soon as boots are done, there's nothing Set can do at all in this matchup. Arthur's going to bully him out pretty hard. But... Overall, both soul layers are pretty much effectively tied. There's not really a disparity anywhere in terms of gold. The only one that's really starting to build is mid, mid, uh, and support. And again, that comes down to not splitting the backs, not getting the mid camps. Mm. I mean, look, look at the difference right there, what that's built up. Should absolutely be a kill here. Yeah. Alright, so you got Morgan beads, Morgan ult. She needs to be ganked immediately when she goes back into lane as soon as your guys' ults are back up in your abilities. That's definitely like exactly what I said. So in this fight, you know the following things. This fight, I'm assuming, is a response to that gank over there in solo lane. But no vision anywhere to be found. You have this one ward. That's it. They have sent you from all angles. They have ults up. Besides for the Morgan ult, every other ult was up. Ares just ulted you. 
A Wilkes has no ult. The Wilkes is on her way. You don't know this yet, though. Mm -hmm. You know, a Wilkes also has a level lead. You know, she has money she hasn't spent from that gang, so it's not terrible in terms of that time to fight. But, where's your backup? Yeah, I'm at tower. Yeah. Neat's not there. Look where Neat is. So, what was going on? Was this not communicated, or what? It's Neat's doing oracles right now. Like, uh, I, I just remember... Um... Saying that we should just collapse on the Ares. Uh, without, you know, again, with... Without the fucking warp control. So we... <laughs> it was just a poor decision on, like... My part. To say go on Ares. Um... So you guys trade, air result comes out, you guys don't lose anything for it. Griffin actually beads is it, so you do have Griffin no beads right now. Griffin has no beads, meaning that you have to be careful around mid. Morgan's beads are still gone for a minute. Hambosh should be coming over here to gank this. And left. But the other thing is that Drago, you're putting too much pressure in that lane for him to gank. Yeah, no, I said that. Like, I said that her beat should be still be down, and I immediately just ran away to make it look like I was going to do something. I'm pretty sure he comes over here and tries to do something. Yeah, that's my favorite. Pretty sure we get a kill here. One for nothing. Just we disengage. Yeah, we, we get out. She also is backing. What's going on? Solo. Arthur's starting to actually build a bit of a lead now. You can kind of see he's up 300. So Solo's starting to turn against him. Arthur does have boots done. Arthur's beginning the proxy. So right here, I remember Asian calls out the proxy, that he says that Arthur can be there. Yeah. But look where Kumba is again. Look where Griffin was. Lost his jump, no beads. Larry's probably as old. Remember, this thing's not always accurate because it's behind. Mm -hmm. Larry's probably as old. You don't know where Wilkes is, and you know that Asian is too far up to get there. You know... Luckily he managed to miss every single screen. Yeah, I mean, again, it's like a lucky thing on us that they get nothing off of it, but they, they definitely could have. They honestly should have been looking for gold at this point. They have such good ward control. The big thing is, on her has trans stacked. Neath hasn't even bought trans yet. So you really cannot take any 2v2 or, th or 3v3 fights. You really are at a big disadvantage right now. On top of that, that mid camp, we still have not secured mid camps. We're talking about, honestly, it's probably like 22 to 24 mid harpies that they've gotten. Because I don't think they. I don't think we even split or stole many of them at all. I think they got almost every single one uncontested. Yeah. 
I think Asian could be in some trouble here. Arthur's probably gonna. I think Arthur's just gonna just push his tower down. Yeah. So right here, you guys are engaging onto the Humbots, and the Humbots goes to engage in. And now you definitely look. Look what areas it's starting to shade over to. Arthur tells him he's fine, doesn't need his help. We're just wasting a lot of time here. Now he's probably telling Ares there's kill potential here. He got settled out. But in mid though, you know, I mean, it's an equal or opposite response. You know, it's a gank in mid now. Soul comes up the back. You got one for nothing. Morgan ult used. Yeah. So Kumba and Tish have to reset here. And again, like, we go for our back camps, they immediately go to mids. We're just not contesting the neutral farm again. And we have war control on that side too, now. <laughs> you guys see what I mean? Like, like, we just choose to go to our backs. It's like, at this point, we're used to not getting them in this game. We're actively not really trying to get them anymore. You know, and look at the gold per minute differences. Sixty, seventy, you know, which again, you know, that those harpies are worth around that that you know amount, and it's being split. So you know, you do the math. It's pretty much the difference right now is those mid harpies. Alright, so that whole fight, what what went wrong with that fight? I mean, right now it's a two for two, but you know, we keep playing this out. Um, I, when I was, when the Ares was on me, I called like go on Ares because he's literally by himself and everyone was yeah. running away. And I never got any help, but I still, because I'm ahead, I got the kill on him. But, like, I didn't hear anybody else calling anybody, going for anybody else. So well, know. also, what, why don't we just look at this? Uh, let's just look at... Look where Griffin is for this fight where it starts. Versus, look, look where Wilkes is, right? Wilkes is there at the fight already. You know? you If you guys had just waited a little bit longer, you know, and, and engaged that fight when Griffin was closer, you probably don't lose beads. Humbot's ult probably can initiate the fight. Humbot probably gets out. And, all, and also, I mean, just, just look where Fear No Evil was used there. Why is that held so long? You know what I mean? It, it, it just—it doesn't. It's not what that. We didn't. It did. It didn't control space. It didn't cut off or you know or create an entrance, seal an exit. It didn't you know like force them to play around the terrain that you created. It was just thrown out in the middle of the lane as a last ditch effort. There's nothing from it. You know, I mean, if we go back and watch it one more time. Uh. So he could have, I mean, he could have feared no evil right there. You know, he could have feared no evil as soon as he went in on the on her. You know, like throwing it here, he could have went and helped the soul with the Ares when he got in there. 
You know, like just diving for that on her was definitely not the best decision either. So we have set here, you know, we, we kind of, we have pressure here, you know, why, why are we not, why do we not try to pull the gold fury here? You guys had set, Archer wasn't rotating yet, and they had no ult. We're gonna have a very hard time contesting any of those kind of characters that are still up right now. The other thing is that you guys look to reset. You guys haven't reset from that last fight. Look at Golden Hand. I had that whole thing there, you know, like missing the meds, missing the neath root, missing the missing your own root. I mean, that you guys, it's just you're forcing it. Like you can see you're forcing it. You know, you're trying to, you're even trying to like, you know, close distance with abilities. You can't be doing that. So they they ping this out I here. Like so look where everyone is right now. You got two people at base. Griffin's stuck between committing where he's gonna go. And he's stuck in mid, so you can't even go to Pyro here, you get nothing off of this, but... Just l look at the wards, look at the control they have. You know? So... There's just nothing you're gonna get done off of that. It's essentially a free pick. So, so let's look at this, right? So bad wards come to Drago getting picked. Mistake number two. I mean, well, mistake one, bad wards. No coverage at all in mid. No wards being refreshed. They have a, they have a clear path to rotate. Right? The only, like, now you guys in that time have seemed to get that sentry out now to counter their vision. So there. So, but it's still definitely way more wards in their favor. They've been warding our jungle and our rotation path from, you know, red to purple. So, the lack of word coverage is mistake one. Obviously, that's a mistake. Mistake two, that gets Drago being picked. Uh, did you, you, did you guys call that rotation heading over to him? No, I was like, I was like, okay, these guys are walking at me. There's probably something gonna happen soon. And then, blink, and then I was like, oh, 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 there's three here. I'm dead. So, mistake one, no wars. Mistake two, Drago gets killed. Drago gets picked. And then, and then number three, Dr Griffin decides to, I guess, get a... I'm assuming a, like, blink three-man Humbots ult or something. He said he was going to purple, and then they- But they purple's not even and... close to being up. Yeah, I don't- that's what he said. Yeah, that's I- that, that doesn't make any sense. It's just not- there's no way. Like... If we watch him... Yeah, so he counters that sentry. Killing spree. Walks right over their ward. I mean, so look at how epic positioning, though, you know? You guys are getting ready to come in. You only have Frontline and Tish left, so you really have nothing left. They're always resetting here. I mean, you guys didn't know about this, granted, but...
Where you guys are going now? You guys are going the right when Gold is up, and you know they're and you and last time you saw them, they're in that side of the jungle, and you guys have no vision. This is a free Gold Fury for them. Because where come the worst? They have that ward that Sogus walked over, and they could have gotten off then if they needed to. So, you guys tried this gank earlier, it worked, because she didn't have beats. This time, you guys committed the same amount of resources in, but she had beats. So, and they knew it was going to come for a second time, and they get a rotation off from it. But, here's the whole thing while this is going on, right? This whole fight's going on, but look at this. So you have to look at it's already you know a four a four v five. Essentially, this fight's a three v four. Asians way in their back line. On on her. Ares is full HP. And Morgan's really low. So, what do you guys think about that fight there? It's a lot different to watch it back from spectator than seeing it, you know, through like a streamer in game. Completely unorganized. I mean, you guys could have just used that humbot to ult, force out Morgan Beats, and disengaged it. She still had an Aegis, too, which she didn't have to use till way later in the fight, you know. But she had one up if she needed to use it. No, but, but all this happens because there's just a lack of control of vision. Look at all the vision they have. So when you guys rotated through, and a lot of the time you guys did rotate up through like this, you know, not only are there two wards where your, where your rotation started, you know, top and bottom, you got this one you got to walk around, you know, and you got these this one to worry about coming to lane. So there's no way you're getting in without somebody seeing you. So to commit that many resources, it's a, it's an it's just an easy you know response from them. It's like it's like it's, it's a no-brainer, you know. It's it's like an easy punish. They'll pick up gold here for free, obviously. So next fight has to be at Pyro, you know that's for sure. But. You guys are loaded up with wards. You, know, you guys have all been placing the wards, but you know what's been happening? I, are we just not defending our vision, or or what? Because you know every single time we wind up looking at the map, we never seem to have ward control anywhere. You know, so so what was going on there? I don't know, I just re-upped on wards. I was placing quite a, a couple at least. There. After see. that, I have called, so let's just ward up around them. Fire and stuff. Don't. I don't know. I think we're defending our vision. I think when we contest our vision, we just give it up. Like, right now, we have vision control over fire. Let's see how long that lasts. They could also be holding the wards in like the 15 body. seconds. That's what I mean. Like, you can't go there and commit those resources. Because now look. So, you ran up there to go stop her from taking down your ward. Which, 
I mean, you you know, there, there's no there's no actual possible way that you're going to be able to get up there after she's already meleeing it to start, actually out secure her. She's a bubble anyway. Get those three hits for she gets three hits. You know, souls on the other side of the map. The rest of your team is here. So. I guess I gotta disengage or poked out. So, look at. So, they are willingly engaging on you guys here. You're all zoned out of this fight completely. Epic looks like he's looking for somewhere to go in. There's no sand clone that he can teleport to yet. He's most likely I'm assuming to put one over the wall and teleport to it. No, that's you're gonna fight the Awilix. Griffin goes in over here, but but again, you know, where's our where's the, where's our damage dealers in this fight? Over there by Ares. And they, they're zoned out by one person. You know what? What were the here, comps? Here, like? here, I was like, go on either of these two right here. I, like, just go on them because I have pen. I had both rings online, I can shred any of the tanks that are running at me. Uh, okay, so I said okay. we can just fight them if they're running at us like this. Yeah, but like, who? What's up? Who are you telling them to go on? I was saying Arthur a lot. No, but I'm saying like, who are you saying to go on them with you? Because Griffin's nowhere to be found. Yeah, I was just saying, look at Arthur, like, he should be our target, and this is, this is what was happening. I mean, just look at this up here. I mean, what is going on? There's just no way. I, I, you know, Griffin just willingly jumps in over the wall here. Epic's even further separated. You guys are running out of relics. The separate is down. Both of Soul's relics are down. Tish's relics are down. Frenzy's up, you know, but, you know, Kumba just now got to the back line with the rest of them. You know, and then, and then Asian goes down, but those people's health bars did not move from when Asian started fighting them to now. I was laughing right there because that was like so VM for him to just do that because he can. I mean, yeah, he didn't get punished for it, so. Literally nothing we can do. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do, like not back underneath the tower like that. I mean, that's like a start. I mean, I think that we're seeing a trend, though, already in these team fights. The damage is not able to follow up, and there's not like a. It, it's like you guys are together, and then no one starts to acknowledge the separation. Then the separation just gets more and more severe, you know what I mean? And that's kind of like what's hurting you guys the most right now. You know, if we just look at, you know, like... Jesus. Apparently somebody's negative 17,000 XP. Let's just look at player damage here, you know. So they have total vision again. So we're starting to get control back. Do we have sentries on us? No, we have one sentry on Kumba. That's it. No, so we so we don't have enough wards to get vision. We're 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 get, we're down around 10k now. You know, this might be the t the point in time where we should really give up fire if we can't get vision on it because there's just no way we're gonna be able to take a fair fight here. 
So it was just picked up on left over here. So now if you're gonna fight, now's your chance. I mean, right? Let's, let's what, see what we can do here. That's what we're saying, yeah. But yeah, but like... So right now, you have these three together. Arthur separated. You know, I, I don't feel like anyone's calling out or looking at Arthur because you're completely preoccupied over here. Turtle's there. Griffin, Griffin, it's, it's like he started looping and only Epic knows and no one really communicated. No, we, we, look, called, we called go on him right away. Like this, is, this is us saying go on him. Okay, you then... call that, but Griffin's been walking this way for like five seconds. He's still going that way. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know? this is this is we're calling go and Griffin go or go on Arthur go on Arthur and like Turtle said, at some point says to get off of him I guess they're gonna collapse on us so we just leave. I mean yeah I mean like what's the point I mean you go on Arthur but like I mean she has a point like you guys missed the window of opportunity like you know he he like actually walks right by Humbot and right by Set didn't get slowed didn't get CC didn't even get poked. Even by you, you know, I mean, so I, I don't know what you guys are doing. We lose our last bit of ward control in the fire pit. For some reason, Humboss is wasting cooldowns on fucking, uh, you know, camps. Set hears them all over there, it goes over the wall. Fear no evil's wasted here. Set does beads. So what was the call here? Back up. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. So you guys I, are disengaging here. Yeah. I thought the call was disengage, you know? When did disengage become go on the Arthur again? Okay. That's exactly what he wanted you guys to do. Could have just walked right past him and left. Instead, like he's, I think it wanted to be his Discord pops on you. Yeah, and you yeah, got I tried, I, yeah. I tried the ages before, like some stuff was going out, and the Discord popped. That I didn't realize it popped. Bad. If you had just kept moving, you would have been fine. You know, you guys called to disengage, and you guys stopped to take another fight. You know, you guys can't go against your own calls. Regardless, if all of you follow the call or not, you can't just drop and disregard your own call. Now they're gonna get fire. Griffin is up. He's not gonna be able to do much off of this. <laughs> Obviously, you know, he'll just pick up a camp when he can. So build wise, you have crushers, boots, hydras, that's completely fine. Magi's blessing, I like it. Having trouble getting into the fights. Works really well for what he's trying to do. Needs to go in the uh, power pen build. Crusher, picking up the Axie now. Again, fine. Turtle's build looks fine. I'm assuming that's a. Stone of Binding? Yeah, it's not Stone of Fall. <laughs> That's a little bit late for a stone of binding. Usually you want to see the binding, like, you know, second or okay. third. Yeah, but, like, I don't like No, it's not effective here, for sure. Okay. So here I would have got my magical defense item, if you really wanted magical defense. Um, I probably would have picked up... 
You, I, I mean, the physical defense would have. I honestly think Emperors would have helped a lot here in this slot too, especially because the fact is you know you're gonna be defending now. You're down 10k. It's cheap, efficient item, good for anti sieging. This right here, this messes up this whole game. Like you guys, like like they're pushing down the tower. Both of you guys know they're pushing down the tower. No one's in position to defend. Drago's in mid still. You two are in left. And Oweerox is in the Phoenix already. You know, how has this happened? I mean, what, what did you guys think they were going to do when they took when you, when you when they took down that T2? And, and you know, you guys, and you saw them over, and, and, you know, they saw you over in left and mid. You know, why why would they back up and reset? Like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Look how long this takes to get back. Cause like, we missed it before earlier. They get hit by minions. They at the back. Koopa walks up and throws abilities out. So we lose right absolutely for free. We're forced into a really bad fight. Humbot has blink to initiate, but there's no priority targets to initiate on at all. The best thing he could do right now is blink and try to get that Arthur and the um set off of uh who the hell is that dog looking person? So try Morgan, Morgan yeah. Try to get Arthur and Morgan, you know, off of the, uh, off the knee thing. Your Titan's under attack. But so there's no priority target calling here. Not only that, but you also don't have any kind of a... Uh, a Fear No Evil is used again, like defensively to save himself. No one's able to follow up off of it. So like the ult loses all effectiveness then. Now this fight could have went decently here, but it starts to get like a little bit out of hand pretty quick. This is ridiculous that this guy does this. It's a really good stellar burst. So if set is, so you have what you have. Uh, Morgan's in the back again. Morgan's dead here. But look at this. What what's the number one rule of defending the birds? Oh, go outside the Phoenix. Yeah, don't need the Phoenix. Like, you know, you you guys had a, a five on three, but now you just turned that into a 3v3. I mean, just just look at that. Like, the, wh where is the target calling? You know, there there is none. You guys are all just fighting your own battles over here. You know, not not to mention that this fight goes from really good to it turns back against you to like a neutral point of view. So let's just go back to that, and let's just look at you know this over here. I have to watch this from FX perspective. Honor jumps in. So seconds out here. He's out. Your Titan is under attack. But look at this. He's had to try to throw the spawns again instead of leaving. He died. 
Having sat back at that fountain and coming back in would have been a huge difference maker. So what do you guys think? What, what, what are you guys seeing? Oh, we just don't work as a team. That's really all that is. Like, I mean, we don't, we don't, I, I like, you know, you said it, like, you know, we don't communicate anything. The other thing is that, like, our damage dealers are never with our front line. Ever. I've been trying to find one this entire time, and we have not found it once, have we, honestly? No. There's just no ability to follow up. So every single time you have Neath throwing out a root with no CC, like, you're gambling 50-50 if the player's as good as you. If the player knows what you're gonna do, and they, and they know the god, and they can read you, 30-70. Every single time, it's a 30% chance to hit that route. Soul has like a 50-50 because like the AoE, the ability to use walls, player objects, etc. But your need is down to a 50-50, a 30-70 a at best. World Weavers never use to chain any kind of CC. You know, that's Tish's fault, that's the front line's fault. There's just no line of communication. You know, you guys are taking every fight all over the place. I mean, just look at this. I, I, the game is literally lost here because You know, I mean, Set has almost six items here. You know, he decides he just gotta have this camp for some reason. You know, if you guys are using the chat to, to put timers in, which you weren't again, you know, you guys would know fires coming. They just did pyro. You know, so why would this be safe? Yeah, that guarantees fire 10 million percent and they'll be able to get advantage and press on the Phoenix before uh, you know agents even up You know, Asian's still down for 20 seconds, and they're about to enter the Phoenix. Drago's too far forwards, goes to the opposite side, gets forced in, gets taken out, loses both relics. This is pretty much game's pretty much over at this point. Asian's not Asian is not even alive to honestly even be in position to defend the mid or right Phoenix. Goes in too deep. Hanbot's ult was wasted earlier defending the Phoenix that there was no way you're gonna defend. Hanbot's ult here could be game changing. Hanbot's ult when your Phoenix has 200 HP, you know, and you're fighting a three on five pretty much because not everyone's in position. There's just, there's just no way. There's no way that's gonna happen. Um. So, so that's game one. Like, if we look through the details and final builds, which we probably don't even get to see, because might just where we get to see everything. All right. So you just go through everything. The Neath build's fine. I mean, arguably, maybe you want to see a little bit more pen somewhere after that Executioner. I don't really know how much Kins was helping. I don't really suspect that Neath was able to get many auto attacks off, so I kind of doubt that that was helping very much. Um, Frenzy, by the way, was used zero times this whole game. Um, Stone of Binding that late is just an awkward item. The magical defense never really got online. 
I have zero idea what Asian's build is. I really don't understand it. Like, this is, like, a very particular playstyle and set build. And I mean, like, set build. Like, a set build in that playstyle, not, like, the character set. Like, tank boots into Contagion, into Talisman. This is an aggressive sieging. We're putting pressure on the team fights. We're going to abuse this item. And how we're going to abuse it is I'm going to be able to tank up all everything from the initial front line. We're going to dive under the tower. You're going to stack this up. Like that mini frenzy, siege through that tower and keep chasing. This helps. This helps with that thought of mitigating a lot of that CC. But you know, look at this. I mean, here's a thing that most people don't know. You know, but he has full CCR, full cracker show reduction already. You know, so like it all goes with that build. You know, to reduce the crowd control. So he has the ability to kind of to to do that. Like he's very he's tanky. But the problem is, is that he's not able to actually get damage off and stick on people and put out meaningful damage. 11k on set? No, there's just no way. You know? And then we look at the Humbots build. Pretty standard, nothing crazy here. Um, again, I'm not really big on building the two defense items back to back. That just means you have you don't get an actual power damage spike for probably the way he was farming. Figure probably a good 10 to 12 minutes makes it really awkward to fight in those team fights. He also had 15,000 gold, which not really too great at 32 minutes. And you have uh, Drago's build. Everything looks relatively fine. Um, I honestly might have picked up something maybe even like a. Uh, a toxic blade might not have been bad here, just for like the fire giant healing, the uh, life steal. With this, is Pythag alone going to give everybody the King Arthur's healing? Um, you can get this. You can even get a shaman. Like you, like the the rod is fine, but like the concern that I have is that like you have some pen off of this, you know, but you're dealing with targets where you know. Yeah, 298 and 288, you know, and, and, and keep in mind, they get these aura passives, too. So, even you know, so these are two, like, extremely tanky characters, um, especially this Arthur going in there with this Billy. He's still a glad show. He would have gotten even tankier later on in the game. Let's look at game two right now. Yeah, I was debating between the, the Rod and the Shamans for that last item. Well, the CDR definitely could have helped. More disapparates, more ults, more CC throughout the fights. You know, it's always going to be a good thing, honestly, when you're in that kind of situation. Get this replay through here. All right, so for some reason, right, so we're going to go in. The draft on this game, because it's already 8.05, we don't have a lot of time to go through it. Like, as in-depth, we can go through it now. Everyone's loading in. The draft on this game, I don't know really what was going on. I don't really know where you guys got some of your bans from. You know, the areas I understand, the second one, but you can't just be banning Thoth and Kronos and all these gods for no reason. Ban what's powerful in the meta. Ice is super strong. We've seen that. Um, Rat, good flex potential, could be super strong. Set, ridiculously strong. Geb, second round ban, ban worthy? Absolutely. We even see it a lot in the SPL. Geb's picked up a lot. He's an absolute nightmare to deal with right now. Those late game sieges with the Isis and a Geb, it, it also, it, it becomes a point, at this game it becomes so desperate that you're almost better trying to put a Hail Mary together to defend the Fire Giant than you would to try to try to defend against this comp with that Isis that them as far ahead as they get. Because it just, you just don't stand a chance when it comes to defending. So here, let's look at what the rat does here. So rat is T2 Acorn. Because this started off, this started off the whole game, you know, to to an epic disaster right away. Just match everything up. Minions have spawned.
That's upgraded his acorn. He's going rogue to the enemy blue. Now, if Griffin had gone right to blue, this would not be an opportunity. Griffin also immediately should have backed up, tries to contest the blue, gets memed for it. There's just no reason to be doing these things. In competitive, generally, you go speed to blue. And a big thing, especially against Rat, that's standard, because this exact thing happens. You know, I mean, I mean, you gotta look at this item for what it is, you know? Rat's walking around with 50 power already. He's quicker than anybody on the map by far with that speed buff, and the acorn by far, it's not even close. It's funny, because we said we can't fight them, so like the first, like, five levels. Not really much you can go. You know, I mean, you guys are saying you guys can't fight them. Turtle goes in there for some reason. Like, the thing is, like, they have a lot of CC, they have a lot of disruption. You don't know where Rad is. You knew he was in right jungle, he never went to mid. No, and Griffin went to Oracles, you know, and because of that, Griffin already lost a quarter of his HP to begin with. Just for going to Oracle. Rat back now, now Rat has Assassins, now he's pretty much just like anything else. Except now he's already 2-0. No, so if we kind of look at... You know, Rat's already up 600 gold almost. So when you guys are doing this, notice how their team, they have their mid on the red side. That's what you need to be doing as well. Because the jungler most likely, when the speed timer is coming up, is going to be on that speed buff. So, when he's on that speed buff, he's most likely going to blink over that wall at you. If you're on the opposite side by red, he can't do that. Wait, okay. Run that by me one more time. Are you talking like because we just ran to blue, <laughs> and you said we need to be by our red buff, right? No, I, I said no, that one. I, when you're I need to stand on the red buff side of the lane. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. If and if they're on the red side, they're invading your red. Obviously, yeah. then you stand opposite side. Like you don't want to give the jungler an easier time. Okay. 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 That's why generally you'll see better mid laners usually will always stand to an angle on the wave. They will never stand at the front of the wave for that exact reason. This is just pure carelessness. He was at the first blue, right? He made an effort to go through all over the map to rush over there to contest it. Why would he simply not be there again? If you guys were going to defend this, first of all... Epic is still in the lane, so he's not even here to defend his own buff. Griffin's on it. If you guys really wanted to defend it that badly, Athena had to be there as well. So... So Rat's still in the enemy jungle here. Griffin's doing purple, which he should never be doing to begin with as a jungler. They keep using the shockwave to combo the spear, then you gotta be out of range of the shockwave. Ah! 
Same thing, Griffin's like willingly fighting the rat here for no reason. <laughs> what? I literally told him that would happen. Yeah. I literally said I back, I don't go that, there. Yeah. And, yeah. Then his response was if I didn't go there, he'd be down already. Well, then you lose the buff. What the hell is the big deal? So now I lose a shell. Athena has to walk back to base. Griffin dies. Chiron's over here. Isis is now securing oracles. Do we see the compounding thing? All because Griffin saw Rat by the back camps. And instead of just immediately disengaging, tries to like go in. Then he sashes at him. It just doesn't make any sense. And then we could argue that it compounds even further back to Asian wanting his blue buff, but being in the lane clearing the wave before the buff spawned. I mean, I, you guys see what I mean? Like, in Spectator, it's very cut and dry what happened. Yeah. So, like, what? So, like, you know, like, you gotta pick and choose your fights. You know, your jungler's down 0 3 now. Rats gigantic. They have a semi-global ultimate now they can punish other lanes with. Um, you can only infer it's a matter of time till they start trying to shut down duo lane because every other lane is pretty much either heavily influenced or won at this point. We're not in mids again, like, Griffin's just too busy, like, just doing all the fucking camps. No one's contesting mid camps. You know... We're just all over their wards. They have our red ward, they have a rotation pathway warded to go over to speed. You know, like, we're, we're playing right into their hands right now at this point. <laughs> Do we have timer on this speed? Believe so. So why are we not all there then? If we're trying to get the, it was the with the objective to get the speed back. But if you can notice again over here. Look who's the first one out of lane, you know, by a good amount. Sex always had that lane first, in our own jungle. You know, this is a matchup that Arthur should have pressure in. So what was the issue with that fight there? Um, we used a lot on set, and then they just came in. And... You used a lot on set, you know. That's that's right. Did, did you guys do you guys have pressure in mid at this point? No. no. So pretty much, it, it's kind of safe to assume that if Fish rotates, Isis can follow, probably while still having lane pressure. So that's already a double-edged sword. 
You know, at this point also, seven minutes in, just look at the items, you know, you have Pen Boots, Tier 1 Bancrofts versus Warrior Tabby. Isis versus Chiron, who's gonna do more? Isis. You know, what's gonna do more right there in that tight corridor? You know, an Athena ult, or, you know, let's say like a two-man Cataclysm, three-man Cataclysm. Yeah, you know, so so I mean, you know, where, you know, like look at the locations we're picking these fights. You know, you guys, you guys are making it very hard to win fights. You know, in this situation, so Soul comes to rotate here, and right now Soul is currently, you know, Souls are Soul is gonna start taking a hit next few per minute pretty quickly here. Soul does get some kills, but. So you guys pick up two. Um, but you see, Drago's still behind already, and Apollo's gonna clear another wave. Apollo ult should be forced here, at the very least, yeah. So even at the end of that, Apollo still walks out with 20 XP more, and now he's gonna get his buffs. Cause he didn't rotate. You know, so we take a net loss over there. Which again, it's not the end of the world if it's a one-time thing to restore what's going on and say that we will rotate, we will pressure you if you do this. So that that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but um, if he has to continually do that, He's not always gonna walk out with net gain, because the minions obviously do increase in what they're worth as the game goes on. Another blue buff invade here. I mean, just looking at this, right? Never mind the fact of like the same thing that we said before, but just look at the soul laners alone, right? And look at the junglers. Look at the differences in items already that we're seeing. Yeah. So if that fight was, let's say, a, a 40 60 before, because, you know, uh, Asian had less mana and they were set up and waiting for them, let's say it was against them to begin with. And they got kills, they got rewarded for it, no one died. What do you think it is now? There's just no way. Set his power boots done. You know, Rat has Jotun's done already. You know, there's no way you guys are gonna come out of this fight with a win. You know, and then we come over, we lose someone else, we lose more ultimates. You know, Tish is now getting forced out. feeling in my gut that that fight wasn't going to go well, but I felt like, I mean, we still lost both players. <laughs> huh. But, like, I knew we were going to lose both of them, but I wanted to see if I could mitigate a little bit, but if, I just, I, I just answered my own question, never mind. <laughs> you know, like, like, I, like I discussed before, you know, I was talking to a bunch of people about this last night. Losing a buff, remember, you get less XP and everything from invading a buff. Losing a buff that's worth an eighth of your experience bar. It sucks because you get a lot more if you secure it for your own team. But it's not worth that heavy of a payoff. You know, if you lose so much if you start getting picked. It... You know, there's obviously a point in time where you have to stop the invades, you know. I believe it's 15 minutes, things are back to normal pretty much in terms of invades. You know, but... 
you know, but this game's already had so much compounded into it by 15 minute mark, it's really not much of a game. I mean, you guys are already down, you know, almost 5k. So here's the problem there, right? So we just saw a Geb taunt, no follow-up. I mean, a, a Geb gets taunted by Athena, no follow-up. Every Geb is using Shockwave, and every single Shockwave is a Spirit Ball following up on it. You guys have got to start coordinating damage with one another. You know, it's got to be done. Griffin invading these camps just is completely crazy. Makes no sense at all. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. There's nothing to gain there. You're not going to win a fight. You know, you just lost your speed buff again now. Now Rat's going to invade your camps. You know, and he's going to be set up to go and gank... Yeah, he's going to go gank Arthur now. You know, again, compounding, compounding, compounding. For some reason, they don't like the force gold. They definitely we lose big cast because of it. What? talking from like outside your hands. 30 seconds before i back for the for the, like <clears throat> for the the ever the demonic grip whatever the fuck it is yeah what about it yeah i don't I, i'm i'm just saying like if you unless you just want to watch i don't think anything happens until then uh. i mean look at their grouping here i mean just look at what they're doing like but why are they able to do this? We just, we don't know they're doing this because we just don't have the wards that we normally do. I mean, you guys are usually really on top of warding. You know, what was going on yesterday? I had a, I have a, I have a ward right there. <laughs> we know they're doing it. We, just, we, we never get over there to stop them. Okay, but but that's not, that's not vision. Like, like you're to the point where you have to ward the gold fury. That's not, that's not a spot that you want to be in. We have no, we never, we, do we, we never know what they're doing over here, do we? Ever. Never. Where do rotations start in mid? Like right around here, and we never know what they're doing. We have this side warded for some reason. I'm not sure why, but we do. You know, we we don't have any kinds of pressure or anything on the gold side of the map. You know. All right, so this is like the classic like rookie mistake here. What did you all just do? Alt and throw things at them and come over when they already had it for with a nice result. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, so if you guys can watch this right and you can give me the answer, you know, then then like you know what's stopping you guys from remembering this shit in game? You're not going to out secure ice assault. It's not gonna happen. If it happens, it's a freak accident one out of every hundred times. Even a normal idiot in ranked usually secures stuff with Isis ult. Or they do it too early and it blows up because of the time. But usually if they put it down roughly around the right time, they're going to get the objective. So, current ult down. Soul ult down. You know, so what? And so now what should the plan be here? No, we're... we're outnumbered. We should probably just disengage. Well, exactly. You want to disengage because look at Soul. Soul has no mana. Soul has enough for probably a two. She could probably get her stellar burst off. Maybe she gets the one off, and in a couple of seconds, she probably has enough for her three. But that's about it. So maybe three abilities if she gets lucky. 
Athena is fucking dead to rights here. There's no way Athena's getting out of this. You know, Chiron has no ult. You know, Chiron has beads and everything up, but that's about it. Najah's not even in the neighborhood yet. You know? And on top of their vision. And you have no way to fight this. And, and let's not forget that you guys are down, you know, 5k. Granted, they probably have some gold in hand. But really not very much. Because if we subtract our top two from their two, they have 1400 gold in hand. It's really not that, that big of a deal. For, and we shell nothing there, by the way. Zero damage. So we do disengage because they want to disengage because they could have committed to that, but they did not want to fight without their ice assault. That's like, that's them being disciplined and now they can open up Pyro for free because they saw where you guys went. They absolutely could have pulled Pyro here and forced it. Made you guys respond. There I go. We missed 11 autos in a row. Jesus. But like, the other thing is like, you took that 1v1, you knew you are at a disadvantage, so why'd you take that fight? I just a dumb decision, like me being frustrated at that point. By what no, we I mean, I would argue you took that fight because you're like, oh, this guy's Morgan with shit. He's a shit player. I could beat him without mana. Right or wrong? No, that's literally it. So you did I it for that? I think, I think I still think he's a crap player, but like... But it doesn't matter what player. you think if he's a crap player. You just gave that crap player a shit ton of gold. Because that was your first death at level 14. Now, he gets crit done? Uh, I mean, look, he has 2,000 gold in hand. All we gotta do is just... I wish you could rewind by a couple seconds, but this thing's broken, so it's a piece of shit. Yeah, you give him like a 250 gold bounty. For, you know, because like, you wanted to take a 1v1. I don't even know what's going on over here. This was by accident, the surrender vote. You were trying to pause because Griffin's DC'd. And they go right to Pyro off of this. So, this kind of comes down to you guys not being experienced. Typically, when people DC in actual scrims like this, that's the stuff that you do. You don't try to back out so you can pause, you do stuff like that. If you know the people, it's a little bit different, but generally, that's what you're gonna do. Try to force whatever you can force. That's just how most people play. Both objectives are down, you just lost it. So if that solo kill cost you a T2. So you so on top of him getting all that gold, he picked up his team another four hundred gold. Personally. So he figured two thousand total, you know four hundred per player. Which is pretty big, you know. That's the Century Award and, you know, maybe the difference between a T1 and a T2 item, in some cases. It's a good pick there, but like, again, you know, like... It's whatever, you know, like you, like you said, Drake, you said like they're not a great team, they really aren't. 
They do shit like this all the time. We're just not penalizing them for it. That rat should have died probably four times doing that same shit by now. I hate the way the camera works, by the way. The fact you gotta watch, like, this side of the map. Right there, why is Naja not sashing that ISIS? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's exactly what they're I, br I bring it up later because right at that point I was not yeah. on trying to do something, but I brought it up later. Griffin just kind of looked at me like, what? So. Just, just, just look at everything. Just look at this is like the picture of impending doom right here. It, it, it's just no one. It's just nobody's in position. Like Drago is out in left field trying to catch back up farm because he got himself soloed. Like fires up. Gold's not. Apollo has a, a global ult. You don't. So every single time that this is like the stuff that like in 1v1 coaching you don't see it as much. But looking at it this way, like you get yourself played by doing that. You went over. You cleared that wave by the T2. These minions are going to meet. You get played. He ults right over with the rat ult. You're not even there. And that's the thing. You not being there, that's like the green light to fight. Because... Not honestly at this point there's really not much you're gonna do to change anything But if something was gonna happen it would be off of a soul old where they couldn't use an active or whatever They get knocked up and that's how something would probably go into your guys favor Let's say the miracle soul old into like a Chiron into the Chiron to training exercise into the old You know and you get like really lucky or whatever to an Arthur old some bullshit like that But that's kind of how the fight would have to go in your favor You know This here, major communication breakdown. What was going on here when you guys were talking? Um, no, oh, Vantage just like died. Uh, no, we're talking about Drago and Drago and Epic. I don't really know. I'm like, where's the teamwork? Where's the comms? Because you guys seem to have very different ideas of how this team fight's supposed to go. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. At this point, I was like, okay, Epic should be somewhere nearby. I didn't say anything. Like, but at least not. But look at this. He's like old and Gap. Yeah. When I saw this after, I was like, I was just, I just laughed to myself. I don't know if it caught, caught the recording, but I just laughed. Like he's like really deep as hell, about to die. You know. Not to mention by him dancing around like like this for fucking ten seconds. Now his timer staggered. Now Tish loses his old, like, compounding, compounding, compounding. You get soloed, Epic just backs for like, I'm not really even sure what he backed for, because he had like a T1 of an item. I think he had Nimi and Dunn, I really don't want a chance rewinding that much, because it probably will break the spectator. I don't think he had the Nimi and, I think he had Nimi and Dunn, or I think he backed for a T1 item. So you so like that's mistake number two, just randomly backing when fire's up with no vision on that side of the map. You know, mistake three is you then go to clear that wave instead of going to fire side and grouping. That fight breaks out. That's you know, again, that's all goes from two and three. Then the fight kind of breaks even, they get caught over committing, and then when you guys have a chance to actually fight as a unit, no one talks. So that's mistake number four. Epic branches off, gets himself caught out, five, killed. Titch comes up, commits ult, six, 
You know, and let's see how far it goes. You know? And it looks like this is gonna turn into Final Compound number seven, Oni Fury and Red Buff. Seven and eight, Oni and Red. But you guys see the severity of these little mistakes now. Like, somebody has to call the reset button here. Okay, let's calm down, let's talk about this. You know, let's plan something out. But there's just no control. And if you guys notice, usually I have pretty good things to say about your guys' team fight, but I mean, y you guys haven't really team fought yet in game one or two. Team fight. Like, I, I mean, yeah, you guys haven't team fought, yeah, at all. No, like, I, I, I don't. What do you mean? I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You mean like period? Yeah, I don't think we ever had. Like, I, 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 I don't, I don't like. We I, have. They're rare, very few, and far between. But they're there. I mean, like, why don't you think it's you guys are having? Why don't you think you guys ever had a good team fight then? It's just it's it's mainly because I feel like um it's always the lack of communication. And this is me as well. I'm not like telling. Like, no, no, no. I will tell you for sure. There was a hundred percent a lack of communication. That's a hundred percent. There's no way to argue that. Yeah, but I feel like that's every match, even matches that we win. You know, like I don't feel like I know. I never feel satisfied. Even after we won, because I know that we could have played it even better. And, um, ah, fuck, my fucking. Ow. Um. <laughs> like, I, 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 mean, I feel, I feel the same way, but the difference is, is that, like, I mean, let's pause it for a minute. Like, like you have to, like, recognize the difference between. What is that horrible noise? The fire, fire. giant fucking thing, yeah. You have to, like, recognize the different- Oh my god, it's still in my right ear. Just go for it. I'm pretty sure you can mute it. Or, no, no, I can mute it. You can, I don't know what you're so, you, so you still have to, like, recognize the difference between, like, Okay, things need to be cleaned up, you know, versus, you know, Oh, we got really lucky that we won tonight, you know, and, and the other team played like shit, you know, and I know that we won because they fucked up, not because we were better. That's two very different things. Mm. I mean, like you, like the the, the different, like the problem with the communication is Griffin doesn't talk. Like all of you have pretty bad communication skills in different areas. Like I was playing ADC before with Griffin, and I like made him talk, and I kept relaying him information. He was playing jungle, I was ADC, and we got a good amount of stuff done. Uh, and I said to him, I'm like, do you see how easy it is when we just communicate things, you know? It's just such a simple thing. It takes one sentence. Like, me and Turtle went over it today in her coaching, you know? I gave her some examples of it. It's short and easy. Like, it's not hard to do. You know? You guys have got to, like... And, I don't, and, and here's, honestly, a big problem, which is why I'm not really huge on all of you guys playing tons of ranked. It's because whenever you play ranked, you don't do any of those skills like until you kind of can turn it on and turn it off you guys should really if you can try to only be playing with each other so you can be practicing and relaying that information to one another and like make that the only way that you're playing right now to get down that communication uh, set of skills you know what I mean mm -hmm. you know what other you know, kind of issues you think you guys are having. Because communication, I think, is it, it, a major one. Communication stopping you guys from, like, making the the most of that Neethult. Making the making the most out of Athena Taunt. That, that's very obvious, you know. And anyone, even a, even a gold player, they might not be able to know how to do it themselves, but they can watch this and they can understand how that could be a problem. 
you know. But what, what else do you guys think are problems? People getting angry way too fast or getting, like, depressed. Okay, so, so let's talk about that. How do we address that? I tried talking to everybody yesterday, like, what was going on about, like, just asking, like, Griffin, like, what the hell, why were you getting so angry? Or just asking, like, why is everybody upset right now? You know what I mean? And well, um, and I, got, what, I got varying answers. Like, Epic just having, like, you know, Epic's having problems. Turtle's having problems. She just said she was having tur- problems at home. Or, and no. Griffin just said he was angry. No, I'm just emotional. Like, I'm trying it, to, like, work on you're, that. You're, 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 you're Turtle. <laughs> but Tish, Tish gets, like, angry in the moment, and it's gone. So uh, that's like the thing. Like, like it's one thing to get. I can guarantee you, as much as like some of let's say your guys' favorite professionals always seem, you know, level-headed and calm. You know, when they're maybe when they're in their streamer mode or they're you know giving an interview. But I can guarantee you, a lot of them are probably pretty loud, fiery, and angry for a lot of the time when they're playing. And, like that's just like that drive and that will to win. That's gonna happen, you know, in a lot of competitive games, but. They're, it doesn't, like, affect them to the point where they're shutting down and not doing the things that they need to be doing. You know? I mean... So, yeah, so like, that's I, some... I forget what game it was. Like, Griffin, like, got, like, died, like, twice, and he was, like, just, like, just wanted F6 the entire time. That was frustrating to have that... Well, this is a big problem with this team fight, right? So Arthur's in there. There is no possible way he's getting this. It's impossible. Look where Tish is. He's a dead man. You know, somehow Griffin decides that if Epic can, you know, whatever Epic can do, I can do better, you know? So he dives even deeper. He gets forced out, but here's the thing, you know? Double. He's like, oh, yeah, that's good I didn't die, but everyone died back here. You know, and, and it's like a situation where we can't really break down this team fight and say what went wrong. Because it's very obvious what went wrong. Like, we, like, we can't sit there and go, you know what, Turtle, you could have taunted two seconds later, you know, and gotten all four of the people diving, you know, instead of two of them. Because that's just ridiculous. That situation should never happen. You know, Turtle should never have to decide when she has to taunt to get three or four people because they're get you guys are getting dove 5v2 because, you know, people are just diving so hard in the fire giant pit. There's no way they're getting back to your team and they're dead. Or let's say, for example, Tish is so far forward, Turtle has to, you know, make a decision in her head. Do I try to save Tish? She's so far up. Do I use a taunt for him and maybe he just dies anyway? Or do I save that taunt for... Drago, who's actually, you know, behind me in the back line, maybe I can help him. There's just, you know, it's just that kind of stuff just not being relayed effectively. You know, it just, it, again, it's just like playing with restraint. You know, every not every single play has to be a balls-to-the-wall, end-of-the-world play. If you don't do the homework, don't take the test. You know, if you don't have the vision, you don't have the secure, you don't have the control, you don't have the ability to safely contest in the right way, and the only way in is to just full-on jump in there with Naja Blink, you know, and jump in there with a, um, you know, uh, uh, whatever Arthur used to close the gap to get in, there's like a Blink again, you know, that's not a play you should be making. You know, like, in rank that works, 100%. We've all seen Incon make minute-long plus weekly montages of him memeing on people in rank doing that. It doesn't work in competitive. It will never work in competitive. Rampage! Triple kill!
Because she's been in the base for like 10 seconds. Like, so, so the problem with this, I remember the comms there. That was a great taunt. It was just not communicated at all. Mm. So, like, that, honestly, like, that was, like, I, I remember we were, all of us were, like, holy shit. All of us were, like, said something out loud when we were watching it in my team chat. All of us at the same time. That was an amazing taunt. Not communicated, and unfortunately, no offense to all the rest of you, you guys don't have the quickness to respond to that. Just it being done. You know, I could say if it were me or Toby or Dirt, there would have been follow-up off that taunt, regardless of what it was called. Just by looking and understanding what's up. But, you know, now, I, you know, we have a great taunt, and it looks like the spirit ball is going to hit, like, fucking three people. Oh, we, we got good, they got lucky there. That's all she wrote there. So, so let's just, we got 10 minutes. So we'll probably break down the builds and we'll discuss for a couple more minutes. Let's, let's just look at, um, so let's just kind of do a little checklist in our heads, right? Did we, so game one, one of our problems was we didn't really use CC to, um, follow up off of ability to guarantee the damage. Do you feel like we did that this game? No. Okay, so that's one of the big ones we had to work on from last team fight review. That was one of our goals, remember? So no, we didn't do that. Um, can we say that we clearly communicated if we were or were not going to be able to be at certain fights? No. Okay, that was the other big point. Remember we remember the other our last team fight review? We pointed that out with the red buff stuff. Same thing happened again. Number three. Did we point out, or did we change anything? Like, did we combo abilities? Did we change CC? Like, uh, Arthur Stan into Soul Ult, or, or anything like that? Nope. Okay. Did we make use of global pressure? No. I, you know, <laughs> I mean, those were like four easy goals that we set for ourselves that, that I feel we could have made steps towards. Or just maybe had, like, little instances where we did it. Do you know what I mean? Because, I, I mean, I don't think that any of those things really require more than, let's say, what, maybe 10 or 15 seconds of just of doing it. It's pretty safe to say you can kind of do it whenever, you know? You mm -hmm. don't really have to have, like, 10 minutes of great gameplay to get an early fire giant. That's obviously challenging. It's a lot different than, you know, let's abuse our global comp. You know, let's follow up off a of CC. Let's use CC to kind of get damaging abilities off, or let's just change CC someone who's out of position. Those are like very different kind of goals. Um, and like this, and like despite all that, right? You guys still came back and played a decent game three against them and had the advantage in the early game. You know, like you guys played worse than I've seen you guys play in a while and you still put up a fight against multiple Masters players. This is what I was saying to Tish. I mean, you know, I said to him, I'm like, Tish, could you imagine being here when you first met me, you know, nine, ten months ago? And he's like, no. He's like, no way. You know, like, you guys have made a lot of progress. I understand that I am a very perfection-driven person. And I've instilled that into a lot of you to only expect and want the best, you know, but sometimes you have to sit back and look where you came from and look where you're going and see how far down the road you are. You know, everyone here has made progress down the road. Granted, I will not lie. You know, some people missing coaching for up to a month or more it obviously hurts us. It's it's very obvious. It's very blatant. You know, we can see the differences. Um, 
You know, but for the most part, there's night and day differences. Um, so, as we start to play other teams, you know, until you guys kind of put yourselves on the map and we start to get consistent scrim partners, it's going to be trial and error. A lot of these teams are unknown or they're mixed platform, they're whatever. We don't know anything about them. Most of the Olympus League teams are very bad, the Masters teams. But I have an idea of who the players are. I've seen them. You know, we probably just don't play them for a, a while. But I can tell you this. In that second division, the Asgard, whatever the fuck it's called, where Cyborg's team is, they are one of the better teams, if not one of the top teams, in that whole division. And I fully believe that we could 3-0 them any day of the week that we wanted to. If we just play the game the way that we know it's supposed to be played. If we just do what we have to do. You know, even if we played badly, I still think we take the set 2-1. You know, they play when they can. They're a casual hangout team. That's not what any of you guys are. You guys are committed. You're here for a reason. You see the improvement. You want more of it. You know, you crave the improvement. You crave the getting better. The the kind of self-gratification of improving, of not being happy with it. Keep fighting. You know? And I know that right now some of you are at a rough spot, but you're going to keep fighting. And we're going to continually improve to get better. That's what we do. But you all believe in here. The majority of you have forked out. Almost a thousand dollars or more to go to Worlds to see the best people in the world play the sport that you want to watch. You all believe in what you're doing here. And it's, if you didn't, you wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be improving the way you are. Now it's just coming together with each other and just believing that you're all here to work towards the same goal and finding a place you could all get together and start to practice that goal. You know? Like I told Draco for the first time I met him, like the first months are gonna be hell. I had to break you down to nothing and fix all the shit you did wrong. After that, we could start making the improvements, and the improvements came. And Draco is definitely a much better player from when he first came here. You know, it's the same thing with everyone. I, I, you know, obviously not 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 as many people had so many bullshit habits kind of ingrained in them. You know, by being around like the wrong people or being around people who they were just so much better than. You know, so it took more time, but. You know, like, it happened, and there's major improvement, you know? Shooter Mage is someone who had a very long, pretty long competitive career, and Drago has kind of shown, you know, time in, time out, that he can be as good, if not better, you know, when he's having a good night than him, pretty clearly. You know, we, we find a challenge, we stumble, we get back up, we overcome that challenge. It's what we do. It's what all of us believe and do here. All this is is one more challenge that we have to get over to keep moving forward. You guys are – like regardless of how you guys look at these teams as not being that good and you're not that impressed with their play, they are still probably a top 100 or top 150 team in the world. That's the level you guys are playing at. You know? And I, I, I don't know all of your guys' personal backgrounds, but I can say with pretty much almost complete confidence that you guys have never been in a spot where you are playing in the top probably, was it 750 in the world or more around that area in something that you do. You know, just look at that percentile versus all smite players. So, that's what I'm saying. So, you guys can't expect something just overnight to just click. It's going to take effort. It's going to take more fighting, you know, to get further. You've already come further than most people will ever come in their lifetimes. You've all been in Diamond. You guys have scrimmed Diamond teams like that Sports Dog Dawn team. That team, part of that team is in the Olympus Masters League. You don't remember when you scrimmed them and you beat them? Like, and that was way back. Like, that's what I, you know, Toby might have been subbing, but it doesn't matter. You still beat them, and they were vastly more experienced than you guys were. 
You know, like you guys, it will, there, oh, it will you guys will overcome it. But in, this time, instead of just fighting on your own, you have to work with one another to overcome this challenge. And, and that's really the problem. You guys are very kind of all oh, lone wolf. I'll fight my fight. That's great. You know, you guys have gotten really far, and it has been about self improvement. And right now, though, we need to work on group improvement. And then we will go back to self-improvement to iron out all the small details and get you as fundamentally perfect as anyone in this Discord or anyone, any of the partner Discord, the people that we know can make you. You know? <coughs> what? No, no, I'm like fucking Craig. <laughs> what a pep talk. <laughs> well, like, the this shitty little Pomeranian came up to me because she noticed I was crazy. She just came up to my lap and I'm just like, that! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun. And like, my, I have I have a bunch of people that, that like ask me, you know, what I, what I do for like, what I, what I might play my game songs because I, cause I'm, well, for one, I'm trying to get sponsored. Two, I actually love playing this game. And like, I, my girlfriend was just like, "Why is Desert literally screaming for fit two hours straight?" And I'm like, "Because he, for one, is how he talks. Two, because we're all passionate about the game." And she's like, "You're never gonna learn if he's yelling at you all the time." I was like, "What do you mean? I had two months of people yelling at me straight for like, what are you like, what are you, what are you talking about?" Like that's literally how I learned. That's how that's how everybody learns, honestly. Everybody but, needs to like, get yelled at. <laughs> Like this is it's definitely a, a, a crazy improvement because I went from like go, like even just ranked like I went from just like winning a game losing a game winning a game losing a game to like at least fragging out and then like one night I start getting tired I start being retarded <laughs> that's that's, that's, a diff that's a different story um, like it's just it's awesome we we come a long way and at this point we just got to figure out like. What we're gonna do about Griffin being a butt and never talking? Well, I need a and... more too. So uh, I was well, talking to Tesh earlier today, so I didn't. But like, it sucks that like, you know, I'm not saying anything either. No. <sighs> I mean, it's it's the it's the calm issues. It's the whole um uh like it, it, it's like the calm issues. It's Griffin hasn't had a one-on-one -on -one in going on over five weeks. Like, it's like these things that are kind of becoming issues, especially now that we're moving to group stage. I, I get that he'll just pay and he'll get the recording. That's all great and all that. But it's, it's not the same as being here, asking the questions, you know, like being with the team, doing it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's something that we, we just... I understand that he can't control certain things. I really do. But we have to kind of work something out where we can have something done more frequently than once every, you know, four or five weeks. It's just going to really start to add up once we start to get more nitpicky about small things. It's going to matter a lot. Um, I guess you can cut the recording here then, Turtle. This, should just, this is definitely a lot of, of stuff for them already. All right.